Today on Lockdown Red Wings, we're going to continue our postseason player grades today, leading with defense. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. Scotty also hosts over at Lockdown Tigers, who have a season or a series sweep for the first time all season. Their first legitimate series win all season because they didn't have to depend on a rain out to get there. So Scotty's probably in a little bit of a brighter mood for once, although they, in the midst, he had two players go down and like back-to-back at-bats, but you know, whatever. Uh, no, no, it was a uh, it was a fantastic weekend. Tarek Skubal is uh, is him. It was it was a fun one. It was a it was a very fun one. And like now you're talking to a proud owner of two monitors. I finally joined the two monitor game. Uh, got that Samsung Curve monitor that I'm staring at you with, and that old monitor I was is uh, currently got the Dallas Calgary game on. And Calgary's yeah, actually I in Dallas right behind me too. Forty six to like eighteen, something ridiculous like that. But it's tied two to two. Like it's a Goalie Vlad has a goal. Class. Vlad Nemestikov with a clutch goal. That's how we tie. That's the local tie-in right there. Damn There's right. That's tie-in. a beauty. Locked on Red Wings. Vlad has a goal. No, it, I think, it was nice, too. Beautiful setup. It's been a it, hell of a weekend for hockey, man. Hell of oh, like a really fun, like, all-time, like legendary weekend for hockey. You had Toronto blowing. Uh, they didn't blow it, the game, but like just losing just another game seven. Beautiful. Uh, the Panthers Beautiful. winning their first first round matchup since 1996. So now, fun mm-hmm. fact: the Lions are the only team in all four pro major sports that do not have a first round win, so to speak, in the 21st century. That's fun. Yeah, yeah. The longest drought for baseball is the Mariners, and that's, and that's 2001. That's a one. Yeah. Wow, that's kind of sad. Well, I mean, it's the Lions, right? Hey, this so, is the year. Yeah, okay. Uh, but we're here to talk hockey. Uh, before we get to that, I do you want to say uh, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online? Bet Online, as you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Uh, on Friday, we did our goalie grades to finish out the week. We're going to continue that trend today as we give you our final player grades. And we're only going to grade uh, seven defensemen. We had a little bit of a carousel because of the trade deadline. We're not going to grade. Nick Letty, because he got traded. We're not going to grade Troy Stetcher because he got traded. We're not going to trade or grade Renouf or Ua Levy because they played under 10 games. So their impact, unfortunately, yeah, as much as... you think we're not going to grade Dan Renouf. All You'd right. be mistaken, well, buddy. Scotty's going to throw out a grade, much like Magnus Helberg, where it's just in tongue-in-cheek and he's going to give him an A+. Plus. Uh, but as far as legitimate Tongue grades go... It's correct grade for him. Yeah, but Precisely. Um, so... Let's let's lead off. Do you want to just get cider out of the way, or do you want? Yeah, to say, like, I think that the makes the most sense. Be. Yeah, yeah, like he's like, the one it, who's going to get it, the highest mark. Is it anything but an A plus? Is it's there anybody be. on the planet that would not give him an A plus? He came in with all the expectations in the world. We have been hearing about him overseas for years. At this point, we get we we were seeing clips of hits from him, clips of of plays clips of sh- of shifts from from overseas uh for for months and months and and well over a year at that point uh when he came over and he finally came over and everybody's like oh like maybe we shouldn't set our expectations too high cuz like he will still be a rookie like adjusting and no he was just absolutely incredible right off rip and maintained that for the entire season uh, he is going to win the Calder, guaranteed. It's just a matter of whether he wins it unanimously or not. Um, Especially after Michael Bunting scored that that clutch goal for the Tampa Bay Lightning, and what was it, Game Six? Six, yeah, uh, yeah. So it like, yeah, it could not have gone any better. Which, in my eyes, is what an A plus is. No, I I completely agree. I mean, you can copy and paste my argument for his why he should get the Calder for the reason why he's going to get an A plus here. I mean, did he have struggles at times? Yeah, absolutely. But the whole team struggled. Sure. And when, when you're looking at this, this, I, I don't want to go too far back. When you're looking at this season in a vacuum, I don't want to look at like the draft since the draft to where he's at now. You look at his expectations of him when he came into this year. I mean, and again, you copy and paste my argument for the Calder. Coming in, he was expected right away to be the best defenseman on the team and be the number one defenseman. And not only did he meet that expectation, 
he exceeded it. And I've said that, I said that on Friday when we talked about the Calder thing. He exceeded expectations. He did it all. Power play, penalty kill, uh, even strength. He was the only defenseman to play all 82 games, only one of three Red Wings to play all 82 games. You know, again, top 20 in points. So, I mean, I can go down the list again. We've done this plenty of times. You know, his expected goals uh, above replacement was like 8.7. Guy was just a complete package everywhere on the ice. I mean, he was a threat offensively. He was a threat defensively. He was a threat just physically. I mean, the, he just did it all. And so he's the, honestly, I, he might even be the one sole player on the Red Wings to earn an A+. Plus. I mean, there are, I think there will be a few other players in the A range. But when it comes to meeting expectations and exceeding them, it's it's got to be more Cider 1. Right. That's like, the not thing even 1A, like just he- 1. <laughs> right, that's the thing like he's a he he's a rookie. Like if you're any expectations you had him being a rookie just absolutely ma- makes what he did so phenomenal yeah. and and like you said he did struggle. Yeah, like he he did there were a couple of times where he struggled and there were some some learning curve moments, but that's you know, he he's a rookie. Like that's yeah. that's for for expectations of a rookie defenseman, he certainly surpassed his expectations, I would say, going into the year greater than anybody else on this team. And when you look at how he struggled in comparison to like what the, how the rest of the team was struggling, it was like not even worth mentioning. So like you said, he had those those rookie moments where those growth moments where you learn and you get better. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, by comparison to how his the defensemen around him, and you – you know, you can't use this as an excuse for one defenseman, use it as a def- detriment for another defenseman. But like, yeah, you look at the talent he was around. He didn't really have a solid defensive partner, someone he can actually rely on that entire season. You know, he had a carousel of, and that's my new word, apparently, a coaching carousel, player carousel, whatever my terms I'm, I'm using are. Um, but, you know, he had Danny DeKaiser for, and I don't want to bag on Danny DeKaiser, but he's not in his prime anymore. And he's, you know, dealing with a lot of lingering injuries. You got Jordan Osterley, who, is the seventh defenseman on most NHL lineups if he's even in the NHL playing top pair minutes with Dan or Moritz Sider. I mean, it's just he didn't really have a whole lot of help anywhere in the lineup. And so the minimal amount of problems he did have just goes to show how dominant of a player he is. You improve that defense at all, like you give him an A plus plus. So he's just a dominant force on his own at 20 years old. I mean, what 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 more can you say that we haven't said already and haven't been saying all season long? Exactly. Yeah, no. The the definition of an A plus grade. Yeah, absolutely. Um I'll ask you, Scotty. We got about another minute and a half here before we go to our first ad read. What's the next defenseman you would like to go to? I want Somebody you, Mark you have Stahl strong. next. You want Mark Stahl next. All right. We will give you Mark Stahl next, but First, I'm going to tell you guys about Bet Online a little bit early, but you know, like, I don't want to cut that conversation short. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is the continued source for all your sport wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Scotty, segment two, Locked On Red Wings podcast, Monday edition. We're doing our final season grades for the defensive core. Uh, You said you wanted to go to Mark Stahl next. Uh, Give me that grade, buddy. This is a fascinating one to me because I feel like a lot of different answers, a lot of different thought processes could have a lot of different answers, could lead to a lot of different answers. Like, if we're going... On expectation, I think he was better than a lot of people expected. And his salary is not nearly what it was last season, which I think also helps a lot of people when it comes to grading him. And his defensive numbers and performances were pretty weak. And he is a defenseman. And this defense was pretty – struggled a lot. So that's going to take a hit. But at the same time, he actually had really good offensive metrics for like the entire season. Yeah. So, um, go ahead. No, no, no. Go for it. I don't know. I was, you... was going to piggyback off that. And I mean, you're yeah. completely right. Defensively, just like everyone else, he struggled. But at 35 years old, expectations were, I mean, I think we, we rose expectations a little bit from last year because, you know, he looked pretty good. He came back on a much cheaper contract. So 
when I say expectations were higher, I just mean like relative to him, relative to Mark Stahl. Correct. We were hoping for a solid depth defenseman who was a veteran presence in the locker room, and we got just that with a little bit of an offensive spark to him. And we we've talked about it, and we mentioned it, but his um, his goals above replacement this season were exceeded his expected goals above replacement. So he was succeeding in areas where metrics were determining he shouldn't have. Right. So he had, I think, it was three or four goals above replacement by the end of the season, and he he his total point his point totals as a whole he had sixteen points, three goals, and um, what is that? 13 assists in 71 games played. He played the bulk of the season at 35 years old in the contract. He was. I'm like, yeah, I, I give him, I don't think I got your grade yet, but I'd give him a B. Yeah. I, mine was a B minus. So yeah, yeah like I, I think, um, again, like given, like if you meet expectations to me, that's like a C, like that's what a C is. Like you exactly were what we you know like maybe expected you to be as, as far as mark Stahl's case like that that's how i would grade him and i i, I think that he was better than what i'm not going to say than what we signed up for but when that better than what i think a lot of people expected him to be um i mean like we talked about his offensive production at uh was actually pretty solid and um you know warren a and by for good reason Right. And that's my point is like by, by most approximations and by pretty much everything you hear out of the locker room, like wore the A for a reason and like was uh, very much a, a leader in that locker room. And, um, uh, you know, players, the young kids calling him dad. Like, I, I, I think that uh, I, I think that he provided something really valuable to this team, even if the on ice defensive production wasn't um wasn't wasn't incredible i uh, i think that he provided enough on the ice and enough on off the ice to be well worth uh what you were paying him and well worth just bringing him back in general so i think that b minus b range is is right up uh is pretty accurate for him i mean i was about to just i was just about to say that too i mean out of the defensemen on this team this year i mean if you were to ask me what are the if there was any, just not even give me a number limit, but just any defenseman from this season, you wouldn't mind bringing back. Obviously, it would be more cider. Mm -hmm. Mark Stahl might be the only other one. And obviously, you know, that might not be a popular choice just given his age. Um, and you have guys like Lindstrom, Wallman, and Hronik who are young, but they honestly, they didn't impress me all that much. You know, Lindstrom had a little bit of a spark there in the season where he was, he was solid depth defenseman, but he, you know, he kind of fell apart there as the wheels came off. And, Mark Stahl just felt like, again, not great defensively, but like he coming in the season, all we were wanting out of him is just continue to not be a liability on the ice. And, you know, Correct. you, you, you weigh the positives with the negatives that he brought. And yeah, I mean, he, he brought more than he, you know, suffered <laughs> at his expense. So I, and the players clearly like him. So I, I like Mark Stahl. I be solid, you know, solid B for yeah. Mark Stahl. I'm pretty happy with that uh, overall sure. grade. Yeah, I, I I agree. Let's uh, move on now to Gustav Lindstrom. How about that? How does that feel? Sure, I I don't I don't mind going with uh with with Goose Liddy. There's a lot of like nicknames of Red Wings past that apply to him. I guess. Yeah, I but... <laughs> um, Gustav Lindstrom played 63 games this season. He had 13 points, one goal, and uh, 12 assists this year. He had a Oh boy, that's not on this form. Submit form. Let's see here. His the hockey player. Yeah. His expected goals for percentage in the season was 45.7%, which no one on this team is really gonna have. I don't think there's a single player on this team is gonna have an above 50, give it with a 10 game minimum, to be honest. This team's was so bad. So given what the team's expected goals for, which I believe ended with at like 46%, not too terribly bad, you know, relative to his teammates. Played a lot on the pair with Mark Stahl throughout the season. Another player where I wasn't really sure where my expectations were because he was a young guy, still very raw at the NHL level and showed flashes of becoming a solid depth, like defensive defenseman. And there were, there was a stretch there where he was excelling in a defensive defense. Defen wow. He's saying defense too much. It, it becomes a slur defensive defenseman role. Mm -hmm. And he was even relative to his teammates and he was an above 50 expected goals, 4% at one point in the middle of the season. And I was like, 
this guy might actually be a genuine, like deep defenseman, like role player on this team. And then as the wheels kind of fell off, so did he ended up being just okay. It's, it's tough for me to assign a grade to him because I just don't know what my expectations were, which is why I'm probably just going to roll out with a C because I still am unsure of how it's, I'm giving him a C because he was okay. He wasn't like, he didn't ex- excel my expectations, but he didn't necessarily fall b- beneath them. It just, he's just where he's at right now. He's in a weird yeah, spot yeah. for me. For sure. No, I, I completely agree with that. Um, that thought process. I think I was going to give him like a C plus. So I, I, I think, um, and, and again, this isn't like, like Mark Stahl's, B minus is not the same grading system as like Gustav C plus. Every you know player I mean? like, does different. that make sense? Yeah, every player like is different. Right, like it's not the that that doesn't mean that they're half a letter grade away from like their production on the season at all. Um, but I, when I when I think of of Lindstrom, it's just like I think that he. Like you said, like he, he had a little bit of a of a stretch there where I think there was some confidence in him. Uh, he, he played up up lines at I mean at points right, uh, especially when Danny DeKaiser was going through like his um, stuff where he was missing a stretch of games there. There was there was quite a few moments where he had to kind of step up and and I just I never felt like like oh like Gustav's and like the you know liability like i never thought like that yeah, and, and i he think never really was and right and i think as far as like expectations on the year go i'm not really sure i would have ever asked for too much more than what he gave us so i think for fulfilling Absolutely. that role as as minor of a role and and as again as as weak of a of a defensive core um, as we had, I, I mean, again, like, I, uh, I don't think I was ever going to ask for too much more than what he gave us. And so I, I think that I, I'm pretty comfortable with, yeah, like a C or, you know, a, a, yeah. a low C plus kind of a thing. Yeah. And I, I think that's fair because I think, you know, talking about not really sure what the expectation was of him. I think it's similar to Mark Stahl. Where, you know, coming into the season, you hope he could be a solid depth defenseman on this team. Where it's Mark Stahl, it's more of the veteran presence for him. It's just he's a defensive defenseman, young still. You, so you hope he is a good depth defenseman that shows potential to be maybe more in the future. Um, but any, and I think he did that for the most part. And if you right. look at the, you know, relative to their teammates, their expected goals for percentage, he, Mark Stahl, and Sider were the only three in the team that were positive to their teammates on the defensive core. You know, Gustav Lindstrom just by a slim margin, 0.07%. Uh, mm-hmm. But he was a positive impact on the ice relative to the, his, the line mates he was out there with and right. through a full season. So that's impressive given what this defensive Respect, core is. Yeah. So I think if, if the expectation is just him being in that depth role and showing potential to be a little bit more, I think that he met that expectation, which is why he gets a C. I think that's Fair uh, enough. Oh, I completely be. agree. Um, so we just spent first two segments on just three defensemen so we have four more to go and we're gonna have to rapid fire this is how it normally goes with us i think those three were probably the three that there's the most to talk about though yeah well there's two that there's a lot to talk about but not for the right reasons (laughs) in my opinion um Got to talk to you guys today about Built Bar. Imagine dipping your finger into that plastic tub of birthday cake. Dude, frosting. have you gotten yours yet? I did get mine. Dude, and I did try it. They are so good. It's yeah, crazy. They, I they sent all of us. Just, yeah, yeah. They sent all the hosts a box of this new uh, birthday cake flavor of like Built Bar puffs. They are insanely good and like the same. Uh, like calories, protein, and all that, that like all the built. You've heard the read a million it's, times. It's, it's tons of protein, low sugar. Right. Like it's good for, it is crazy how good it is. I like, dude, slamming through them. Well, when they talk about, and when, when I've read the reads to you guys about it being like a marshmallow that's covered in chocolate, like that's like actually legit. And I'm just really impressed by how the fact that it 
And, and you read these reads sometimes and you're like, okay, I've, I've tried a million different protein bars in the past. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. You, you taste just as good as you say. Built Bar is like the first one, especially with this puff where it's like, oh, wow, they weren't actually BSing me. It actually tastes like yeah, I'm man. eating a chocolate covered marshmallow, which is kind of unfair. Like, how is that even possible? Feels like the, so for the first good. time, you know how there's that cliche where it's like your food that tastes good is unhealthy and your food that tastes bad right. is healthy. Well, like Bill Bar finally found the formula where it doesn't. And my biggest problem is trying to eat them all before my roommate does because he's falling in love with them too. <laughs> uh, he, so I gave him one first. I'm like, try it and tell me how it is. He's like, I actually really like this. I'm like, bet. And so they're I good, tried as like, they're crazy. Good. Good. Like the birthday cake, it's a limited time thing. It is yeah. crazy good. Um, so having said all that, go to built.com, use promo code locked15 to get 15% off your nice. order. Use promo code locked15 for 15% off at built.com. Now that's that's how you do an ad read. You, you screw the read all together and you just riff about the product. <laughs> that's how they right. prefer prefer it, honestly, especially when like it actually tastes good. Yeah, like that's that's real. that's next level. It's a crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. But segment three, pounce table. Segment three, locked on Red Wings podcast. Um, we're gonna finish up and rapid fire some grades off on the. How do you I say this? Get, I don't want to end on him. Can we just get DDK out of the way? I really Let's don't want to end out on that. Sour yeah. note, right? Yeah, I don't want. Um, you want to you want to say your piece? Yeah, uh, I'm going to give him a D minus because I like him as a person a lot and don't want to give him an F. So I'm going to give him a D minus. Uh, I, I think that he did, whether people like it or not, still bring some some leadership qualities to this team. I still think the young defensemen look up to him. Um, I I still think that, you know, in the in the locker room, he's able to, to hand out some advice and and stuff like that uh but it's just the on ice production is just simply not there anymore um and it's sad and and i don't think that honestly it's it's come i'm not sure really any of it is his fault uh you know age no. and, and a lot of uh, really bad injuries over the years i think i've just caught up to him I, I don't think it's anything he has done or or is doing um but that's just how it how it goes and uh the production like i said is just is just not there anymore and i I think to make matters worse like if he played the whole season on the third line uh, i'm not sure like he'd still get like a d or whatever but uh, you know it'd be like okay like he's going out there and playing 12 a night like sure but for a large majority of the season they had him especially in the first half they had him playing first line minutes and just like Seeing Moritz Sider on one end and him on the other was just, it, it was just really, really, uh, like, honestly sad. And um, so, love the dude to death, um, but the uh, on ice production is just not there. So, I'm, I'm going to go with the D minus. Yeah, man. I, you're, you're a nicer person than I am. And for the same reasons that you just said, but like, I just got to separate my own f- feelings. And I love Danny DeKaiser and I, I, I I loved what he brought to the organization when he first came. Like he, he just, see, you know, there was all the hype around him, but I have to give him an F man. It's not personal, but I'm just looking at for all the reasons you just said. And it, it's a lot of it has to do with the fact that they kept throwing him out there on the top line. I mean, the expectations weren't necessarily high for him, but you keep putting him in this position to fail time and time again. And like leadership qualities aside, yeah, he probably brought that to the locker room, but unlike Mark Stahl, you know, he didn't bring necessarily a positive asset to the ice to the point where at one point they waived him. Like, and I'm not going to make excuses for him because I don't know. I'm not in the locker room. I don't know what it's like, but it always just felt like the vibe I got was that he never fully recovered from those surgeries that he had. Yeah. And I just, I, I just, I feel awful giving him an F just because he's a great person. But if I'm looking objectively at the season and how he played, I mean, it look, he looked like a guy who shouldn't have been on an NHL roster, even as bad as the Red Wings. And it just aired. It, so, I, I, being objective and like being like sympathetic are different things. Like, simp- Correct, I, I feel yeah. feel for the guy because I no, not personal I, at I, all. I but. love that he's a warrior and he comes out there and tries his best, but should not have been on the top line. And in most cases, probably shouldn't have been on the ice. Like, again, yeah. if you said like if he's playing third line, like if it's, instead of 
Mark Stahl on the third line, you have Danny DeKaiser, you know, you might give him a D because we talked about that during the season. You slide him down the lineup, he might be slightly more effective against worse competition. But we didn't really see that. Most of the time he played with more at Cider, and there could have been some value there and, you know, playing with the veteran for Cider. But, I mean, he had Cider carried the, the weight on his shoulders for that line. So I just, I have to, objectively, in all fairness, I have to give DDK an F. And it, it kills me to do that. But it's, that's just, that's where I'm at. Yeah. No, I'm not going to hear any, any rebuttal here, man. I, I, I think we all, all as a community agree with that. Um, Philip Pronick is probably the other one we have a lot to say about. Uh, started off the season very cold, got better. Got scratched quite a few games in a row after coming back. Got better. And then ended the season horribly. Like, was noticeably a detriment defensively and got burned on the wing almost every single time he was out there. Um, I'm struggling not to give him an F, man. Like, it's he's in the D range at the very least. I'm trying to settle on a grade right now, man. Yeah, honestly, I, I think... Uh... I think I, I was gonna give him a, a. I think I was gonna give him a D minus, ish. Yeah, D minus or a D as well. Like it was, relative- it was really tough, man. And like you, you talked about at the beginning of the season, he started off really struggling, and to the point where, like you said, he was healthied like several games in a row, and then he came back and he had like one or two good games, and we were like, okay, well, I guess that's chill, and then was like kind of, uh, I don't know how to say this respectfully, but like kind of just like a non-factor for like a little bit. Like when the team was going well, you just like didn't hear his name. Uh, Then you started hearing his name again for a lot of really bad reasons on the ice. And And yeah, it it just kind of spiraled out of control. And and honestly, for – Man, it's really hard to honestly just not give him an F. Like when you're talking about a year ago on this date, right? Like talking about the future defense core a year ago today. Yeah. What, what you would have, most people would have said, oh yeah, like Heronic's probably a, a part of this decor going forward. Like still's got, still has some youth in him. Like maybe a, a like second line like fourth defenseman on like a competitive team. Like, you know what I mean? Like this is, I I think most people shared that belief and I'm not sure people share that belief anymore. It was, uh, it was, it was really a struggle. So when you're talking about, about expectations, I'm not sure anybody went below them on the defensive side as, as much as Heronic did. I don't know how much of my expectations too are skewed or my grade rather is skewed by like how he ended the season. Cause it was so putrid because if you look at his statistics, at least from an offensive standpoint, he put up decent numbers. I mean, he had 38 points, which is just second among defensemen in 78 games played. So he only missed four games. I think two of which were just being healthy scratched early. Um, he was second among all defensemen just after Moritz cider in ice time. So you have to, you do have to, in all fairness, factor that into you know, maybe his poor play, he got faced a lot more tougher opponents than maybe he should have. And then, you know, relative to his teammates, he was only a negative 0.02. So he by like by the same slim margin that Lindstrom was a positive asset, was Philip Ronick a negative asset across the entire season. So like if I'm trying to be if trying to be objective to Danny De Kaiser, even though I gave him enough, I guess I should try and be objective to Philip Ronick and look at like from the advanced metric standpoint, he at least wasn't like a when you consider all the numbers put together, it shows that he wasn't a liability. It's just like at some stretches he was great, and at some stretches he was horrible. I mean, his expected standing points above replacement, which is similar, your number is going to be almost identical to goals mm-hmm. above replacement. They're just different ways of saying the same thing, essentially. You know, his expected was 1.7, but he was a negative 1.1. So he was putting himself in areas to succeed a lot of times, but just wasn't capitalizing, which is why, you know, expected was like in the positives and reality was in the negative. Like he just wasn't capitalizing on those opportunities. So it's just, when, when you're looking at Philip Ronick objectively, like maybe it's just time we realize that he's not a defenseman. We should be giving, you know, 1200 minutes a season. He's just, well, he's, he's I, I not think, a top line defenseman. Right. So I, I think there are, there are dudes in sports that, Nico Goodrum, 
2019. Houston Astro. The Tigers lose 114 games, but everybody's like, hey, like Nico Goodrum's not bad. I killed Badu last year. No, not the same. Nico Goodrum was just it was a, a really, really bad team. And Nico Goodrum was like a slightly below average player on a team with a lot of not even close to that level of player. And I think Heronic might have, and, and he's still young and he'll, I'm certain he'll get an opportunity next year to, to bounce back. But I, I think there's a real possibility that Heronic might have just been an okay defenseman in a defensive core the last year or so that was think well the, below average. I think it's the same situation that happened last year. I think more is being, and I don't mean this as an insult, but I think more is being asked of him than what he's capable of. You know, he is offensive defenseman, much like Mark Stahl, although much younger. So he's much more capable of getting back, but, you know, he shouldn't be a guy who's relied on to do it all. That's not who he is. So if you get a coach who can, and a more defenseman on this team who can, you know, take over some of his responsibilities, mm-hmm. put him in a role where he'll, he'll thrive. I think he'll be a solid defenseman. So like by no means am I giving up on Phil Peronic, but given what we saw no, this season and that. how awful, and a lot of this has to do with just the team in general down the stretch was God awful. But I mean, he was a standout down the stretch. So like, Look at having looked at the numbers as a whole, you know, I will revise. I'll give him a C minus because his numbers as a whole were, you know, pretty decent considering at least relative. Um, but you know, certainly how that season ended for a vast majority of these players is going to highly impact the grade we give them. And for with, sure. You know, I'm Bronick, still going to stand C. pat with whatever I said at the beginning, a D. I yeah, think that's a fair. D is probably still where where i lean just because of again like a year ago i think people's expectations of philip peronic as far as the future of this organization have dramatically decreased um and i think that that is almost entirely due to how he looked in this season yeah and again when we give these grades out guys it's we're trying to look at it based on what our expectations of each individual player will be. So a, a C minus for like you said, Scotty, a C minus for Phil Peronic is not the same as the C we gave Gustav Lindstrom because expectations Correct. for these yeah. individual players were different. So um, with, we have two more that we can rapid fire off here. We have Jake Wallman who joined the Red Wings post trade deadline. Sure. And then we also have Jordan Osterley who spent the whole year at the Red Wings played about half the games Another guy who played a lot of minutes with Sider on the top line. Uh, who do you want to rapid fire off first? Uh, yeah, I'll give Osterle a C plus. Really? Yeah. Okay. Did you going into the season? Did you go? Yeah, Osterle is gonna should be getting top line minutes. No, I. I mean, to hell no, I didn't. I had, but I also right. had zero expectations from Osterle because I had no idea what he was. Like he's the right. guy. I, I don't. I just want to sign him. Like. So, I mean, right. he had I don't, eight I don't points. think anyone did. He and so eight I, I eight think the fact season, that though. he was able to fill in for what he, I mean, like, sure. Like, I, I don't, I'm not, this isn't like a, like, oh, I think he's going to come back and, and like be some, some like vital part to the defense. Like even that there's like room to grow there. I don't, I don't even know how much better uh, he, he could really get. But um, as far as filling in for what, we asked of him uh i i mean sure he was um the worst defenseman relative to his teammates with a negative 0.36 so another situation yeah where more was being asked of him than probably should based on his capabilities but <sighs> he, he, he was pretty rough so i i got i gotta give him, yeah, like, a, give him like a d plus i mean yeah, it's enough. it's tough to it's tough to give anyone like a flattering grade on this defensive core and people listening be like wow brian's really negative but man that 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 final stretch was rough for a lot of these guys he did yeah, have a really great moment scoring everybody. the game winner in overtime which was freaking sweet 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 sure. jesus can't speak freaking <laughs> sweet um but like outside of that like i just i i didn't have any expectations for him and he still didn't like do anything for me so I, yeah, I, deep loss. I mean, yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't think he'd really, uh, he really, nobody had any expectations for him. And afterwards you, 
didn't you don't have any expectations for him going forward still so like <laughs> yeah it, like, he just felt totally, like a band-aid player totally fair yeah absolutely he was uh last one being jake woolman we saw him post trade deadline you got him and oscar sinquist who we'll probably talk about tomorrow or the day after depending on how long it takes us to get through the forwards um jake woolman played 19 games for the detroit red wings um in which he registered four assists no goals and just to give you a little bit more context right, relative to his teammates, he was a negative 0.18 uh, expected goals. So a guy I was really excited coming over. He played a lot of sheltered minutes with St. Louis, and his underlying numbers looked fairly positive as an offensive defenseman. And he showed he definitely flashed a couple times with his offensive prowess, breaking down the uh, breaking into the zone. Like hit, The really thing that amazed me was his ability to, like, cross the blue line and still maintain possession of the puck, which is something the Red Wings fail at. <laughs> yeah, we tremendously. talked about that a few times. Yeah. His so like he showed flashes. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Like he was close to goal several times, but just another guy, like that's like our third offensive defenseman on this team. Like just give me, give me some defense from somebody. Yeah. We did not have very much of that. So, so. I mean, I'll give him expectations again. were pretty low. He's a young guy with a lot of upside. Um, he did meet that minimum games that we were talking about to remain an RFA. So he's not a G6 UFA. So he's under team control. That doesn't factor into the grade I give him. But just from the fact that, like, yeah, I, I just, he's a guy that I just really don't have an opinion of, but also showed some flashes of excitement and shows some potential. So I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable giving him a C. Yeah. I, I was going to say, like, C or C plus again. Yeah. Like, he, um. Yeah, I, I mean, mirror everything you said. Like uh, when he came over in the in the trade, like you know, cool. Like we we were pumped that we got uh some some players on top of the picks. Like and uh, yeah, I I think that uh, I think that he will continue to get. There's a possibility that he could get another opportunity to to make an impact on this team next season. And for yes. someone who was acquired at at the deadline, uh, I, I'd say is a, a a win. I guess maybe that's too like maybe a win is like too positive, calling it I mean, just a straight up win. But like it's it does yeah it, it warrants I think a C or a C plus. Sure. I think it's a win just from the. You mean you basically the trade is obviously a win. That well, no, nobody's you, you look at the start that. of the trade, you traded a second for Nick Letty, and then you got back a second and two players. So, I mean, it's right. a win from that standpoint, regardless. You didn't lose anything, you for sure. You, you traded a second for a second and two prospects in the end, which is pretty amazing. Um, they're not sure. prospects, but players, they're not prospects at this point. Yeah, so I mean, Jake, Jake Wallman just he shows some flashes sometimes enough to enough to excite me. That's all I was hoping for out of him, given his underlying numbers. And so, see, that's that's. It's where I land on him. Not really any deep thoughts for that guy. Any final thoughts for you though? Uh, no, not for our, not for our, uh, not for our grades. I think we um. No Dan Renouf grades. That's about it. I mean Dan Renouf's an A plus player. Dan there Renouf's the greatest hockey player of all time. <laughs> there it is. Greatest defenseman um, of all time. Giovanni Smith's the greatest hockey player of all time. Thanks for making Lockdown Red Wings your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Lockdown NHL. From first round matchups to each Stanley Cup kiss, Lockdown NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Scotty and I will be back with you tomorrow as uh, we will do our offensive grades. Then later in the week, we'll have a prospect profile as we bring on Sam McGilligan from McKean's Hockey. That's locked up. So same time, same place. So you're a team every day. Every day. But online.